and welcome back to another video and in today's video we're going to look at the environment object property wrapper we're going to break down what it is when we should use it and how we should use it so let's get straight into it you may be wondering what is an environment object well the best way to think about it is it is a source of truth which can be used at the root of your application it allows us to inject our own custom source of truth into the environment so any view that is marked with the environment object property wrapper and has the object passed into it can access its properties functions and reactive changes so let's say for example if you have a feature in your app where users can purchase a premium subscription on certain screens you may want to display different content depending on whether the user has paid for your app or not in this case you may be thinking that it makes sense to create a state object but how can screen one and screen two both access the same data? Well, this is where the environment object comes into play and makes our lives easier. So let's actually build our example we discussed before where we will have a class where users can purchase a feature in our app and will show them either a lock screen or an unlock screen. So we're going to build two screens for this, a purchase screen and a purchase date screen, which we will use an SS symbol to switch between a lock and unlock. So I actually break this down in even more details if you want to learn more about SF symbols and Swift UI. So check out that video. So first of all, let's create our purchase view. So we're going to go into our project folder here and we're going to go to new file and create a new Swift UI uh, and create a new Swift UI view. And we'll call this purchase view. <laughs> so within our purchase view, let's actually add a button which allows us to actually handle purchases. All right, cool. So we have a button on our screen now and within the action, it doesn't do anything at the moment. We'll add that in later, but we do have some text that just says purchase me on the screen, as you can see here. So now that we created our purchase view, let's create our purchase state view. And same again, we'll create a new Swift UI view, and this time we'll call it purchase state view. And within our purchase state view, we're going to have an SS symbol that shows whether the feature has been locked or unlocked. So we're going to use the lock SS symbol for now, just to show this. So I'm just gonna add this onto the screen. So within this view, we have a V stack, so we can lay out our views vertically. And we have an image where we're using an SS symbol. We set a font on it, a size and the bold. And then we say that we want the symbol variant to be fill because we want it to fill the whole SS symbol. And also as well, we add a text onto our screen here. Now, if you're someone who needs to support iOS 14 and below, then you can't actually use the symbol variant function here. You're actually going to need to type out lock.fill and that will give you the same you know functionality that'll give you the same view that you have on the screen here but because this project is ios 15 only i'm just using the symbol variant modifier there so what we want to do is we actually want to create a tab view for our app so that users can actually switch between the two screens that we just created and I actually break this down in one of my videos called custom tab bar in swift ui which you should check out so what we're going to do is let's add these screens into our tab view at the root of our application which allows you to switch between both screens. So in order to do this, we're going to go to our root view, which is our test project app here. And within our window group, let's just add both of our views onto the screen with a tab view like so. So we've got a tab view here and within our tab view, the first screen that you can see is our purchase view. And then we specify what we want to give the tab item in terms of an SS symbol and some text for both of these. So let's actually see how this looks in our app. So because this is the root of our application here, we can't actually render this out in um, Swift UI previews. So we actually need to run this on the simulator. So let's just hit the play button here or alternatively, you can hit command R on your keyboard. I'm just gonna do this now, cool. So now that we've got our app running in our simulator, you can see here that we actually have both of our screens that we defined before within it, and we can actually toggle between them on our tab view. So in order for us to fully utilize environment objects, we actually need to use the observable object protocol so we can create our own custom source of truth. 
So I actually break this down in my video using observable objects and app publish to build a source of truth in Swift UI, which you should also check out if you haven't already. But let's create a new class for managing the purchase state. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our folder and we're going to create a new file and we're going to create a new Swift UI file because we don't want this to be a Swift UI view. And then within this Swift UI file, we're going to call this purchase view model. And then what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to type out this class and then break down its contents. Cool. So we've got our class here. We've marked this as final because we don't want any other classes to be able to subclass it. And we have to mark our view model with the observable object protocol so that our view is able to listen to changes from it. And we can observe changes and read the property. So this is how we mark our class as a source of truth. And within our purchase view model, we have two properties that we actually want to listen to changes for so we have has purchased which will tell us whether the user has purchased the you know fake subscription that we're working with and we also have an is loading property which tells us whether purchase is still loading and going through so in our function purchase here we actually have is loading that we set to true because it's currently loading and then we just have a dispatch main sync after to delay to simulate an API. So after one and a half seconds, this will execute the code within it and set is loading to false because it's finished loading and has purchased to true. So now since we want to use this as an environment object because we want our two screens to read from this as a source of truth, we'll actually create a state object at the root of our application. So let's do this now. So within our test app project at the top here, let's actually create an instance of our purchase view model. We've created our source of truth at the root of our application. Now, even though this is the root and no other um, applications at this moment in time could actually access this, I just make a good habit to mark any state objects as private, so it's just locked off. So what we want to do now is we actually want to use the environment object property wrapper in order to pass our source of truth into these two screens. So within our views, purchase view and purchase state view, we actually need to declare the properties within those screens. So we'll do this with our purchase view first. So within our purchase view, let's actually add the at environment object property wrapper here. And what we're going to do now is that within our button function, we're actually going to call this function called purchase. So let's actually run this on our simulator. Now, if I actually try to access the purchase function by tapping this button to actually call purchase, let's see what happens. Now you'll notice that our application actually crashes. So you may be wondering why is it crashing? Well, let's actually read the error. So if you go into your console, it's actually saying that there's no observable object of type purchase view model found. So this is telling us that this view doesn't actually have the purchase view, view model within it to access and use this function. So how do we fix this? Well, what we actually need to do is that on our purchase view, we actually need to inject our purchase view model so that this purchase view can actually use it when we actually tap the button. So let's go back to the root of our application. And this time, before we specify the tab item, we're actually going to use the environment object property wrapper. So let's do this now. And then within this environment object property wrapper, we're going to pass our view model. So what this does is this injects this view model into this view. And you'll notice that we're not doing it via the initializer. We're doing it via this property wrapper. So it picks up that, hey, this purchase view has an environment object. And this is the model, the view model, or our source of truth that we want to actually pass into it. So now if we actually run this again, you'll notice that when you tap the purchase me button, nothing actually happens, but our application doesn't actually crash. So what we want to do now is actually use our source of truth within our views to actually perform some kind of like actions where we 
re-render and show different views depending on our source of truth. So let's do this now. So within this view, let's actually read whether the purchase view model is loading and will change the views that are present on the screen. And we'll also use the has purchase property to disable some of the interactions with this button. So let's do that now. Okay, cool. So what we're saying here is that if the purchase view model is loading, then we want to show the progress view or else what we're going to do is we're going to show our button on the screen here, purchase me with some text and also as well, if and if it isn't loading as well, depending on whether the user has purchased this feature or not, we're going to disable interaction with that button and also gray it out as well. So you can see here how we're using an if statement to change what views on the screen and also modify the button's local state as well. So before we actually make changes to our purchase state view here, let's actually just run this and see what happens. So now if I tap on the purchase button, you'll see the loading indicator and you'll see that our button is now disabled and we can't actually tap on it anymore. So what we want to do is we actually now want to use um, a similar piece of logic, but this time we want to actually inject our purchase view model into our purchase state view. So let's do that now. So I'm going to go back to the root of our application and on our purchase state view, we're going to use the environment object modifier and this time inject the view model. And then within this view, let's actually use the app environment object like we declared it before. So you can see here now that we have our purchase view model and depending on the value of has purchased within our view model, we're going to actually change the SF symbol that you see on the screen and also the text within our text view. Now, if you're looking here on the SwiftUI preview, you'll notice something that our SwiftUI preview is actually crashing. And the reason why this is crashing is it's similar to the example that I spoke about before, where it's actually looking for this view model, but it's not actually able to access it. So in order to fix this, what we need to do is on our purchase state view model within our SwiftUI preview, we need to actually inject our environment object. So let's do this on this view here and we'll inject our purchase view model like so. And then we also want to apply the same thing here onto our purchase view. So this is one thing that you want to keep in mind and make sure that you're always doing when you're working with environment objects that you're using the environment object modifier to inject your source of truth into that view or else your application will crash. So what we're going to do now is we're going to debug this and see this whole flow in action. So let's actually run this again on the simulator. And if we go to our state tab, you'll notice that it tells us that the user hasn't unlocked this feature and we have a lock. But if we go back to our purchase view, let's actually tap the purchase button and you'll notice that it's loading and we have our purchase screen here. But now if we go to our state view, you'll notice that it actually changes the SS symbol and the text on the screen also changes as well. So what we're going to do now is actually discuss how environment object works with child views within you know a parent so for example how does it work how does environment object work with child views within our purchase state view which is not at the root so what we're going to do is we're going to create a child view for our locked and unlocked view and see how environment object works with it so let's create a new file called purchase status view and we'll go to swift ui view and we'll call this purchase status view. Cool. And then within this file, let's actually write, add our environment object, inject it and add our... Okay, cool. So you'll notice again that we have our environment object property wrapper here, and we're just reading the values, depending on the values, the view updates, and we've made sure that we're using the environment object modifier to inject our source of truth into the SwiftUI preview. So now let's actually use our purchase status view within our purchase state view. So we're just gonna copy this view and we'll go into that screen. And rather than having all this logic for the V stack, we're going to remove this. And instead, we're now going to just create an instance of it like so. And now let's actually run our app and see what happens. 
So again, so again, if we go to our state tab, you'll notice that we can see our view. If we go to our purchase tab and we tap purchase, it simulates the purchase. And if we go back to our state view, it shows that we've unlocked this feature. But you'll notice something a bit different here. We've actually not used the environment object modifier on our purchase status view, but everything's working fine. So why is that? When you're actually working with child views within a parent that already has the environment object injected into it, you don't actually need to inject it within to the children again. And the reason why this is because all child views within that view, so the child view in this case being the purchase status view within our purchase state view, will automatically gain access to that source of truth because it's been injected at the root. So it's been injected here. So any children within our purchase view will now automatically get access to this source of truth. So this is a really nice feature in Swift UI that makes our lives a lot easier because it'd be really tedious if we had to use this modifier on every single view after this. So the general rule of thumb when you're working with environment object is that you want to use this for whenever you have a source of truth, which is at the root of your application and children, child views may need to read from it. So keep that in mind. So that's everything from me in this video. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love to hear your feedback in the comment section below. Also as well, if you haven't already, then hit the like button to give this video a thumbs up and also as well, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you can get updates whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you on a bit. Deuces.